everybody. Congratulations. You've made it to the end of the first module on the geography of pandemics and epidemics. I just want to cover some of the things that we learned in this module. So first of all, we talked a lot about how GIS can be helpful for understanding epidemics and pandemics. And we looked at two examples, the Johnstone example of cholera in 1854, and also the COVID example. Um, where we saw GIS or mapping being really helpful for understanding both the spread and then also the public health response. So the applied question that you looked at, you know, was generally understanding that GIS is good for um, public health of diseases, but specifically, we were focused on how you can use spatial data and GIS to map cases of disease and also map rates of disease. Anytime you use spatial data, there are ethical concerns. And in this module, we focus on some of the privacy concerns of working with spatial data. All data should be protected, but spatial data, which links everything to particular locations, can be particularly sensitive. And given the proliferation of GPS and phones and other devices that we use in our daily lives, issues around ethics and privacy of spatial data have never been more important than they are today. We've also talked about how there can be sometimes a mixed mismatch between what you can do and what you should do. So just because the data and technology are available to allow you to ask a question, it's always good to stop and think about what the implications of that work might be. And if you don't have the right people at the table when you ask that question, you might miss some really important perspectives. So if you are working on data about a particular community, people from that community should be able to weigh in on the work that you do. In our GIS background section, we focus on some of the elements of spatial data and how it's represented. So spatial data are cool because they have an X and a Y coordinates, so geographic coordinates, which allow you to locate that data in space. They can also be tagged with all kinds of attributes, time attributes, characteristics of a particular location of, um, you know, if it's a hospital, it might be the number of beds in that hospital and so on. So there's a lot of attributes that can be associated with location. And it is really that location allows you to index things in a universal way that is incredibly powerful. But when you put data into a computer, you have to have some way of representing it. And the two ways that we typically think about how we represent spatial data are whether it is an object model or a field. So object models are discrete entities which are typically represented by points. So that could be a location of a, a person who's sick, a line, something like a road, or an area, which could be something like a census district. Field models are things that are continuous. So a, I always like to think about a field model as being something that if you had a map of it, if you closed your eyes and you put your pencil down, if you opened your eyes, you would be guaranteed to have a value. So houses, if you put your pencil down, you might find your pencil falls between the houses. That's not a field model. A field model would be something like air quality, where every location has one. And so when you have these things that are continuous through, through space or part of a field model, model, we usually represent them as a regular shape, which is a raster, or a tin which um, we showed you are a series of triangles that are generated from the data themselves. One thing to note is that a field, field is sometimes what we call variables in databases. So your attributes could be stored in fields. It's a different kind of field than what we're talking about here. Think about a field model as sort of being like, like a field of graphs. Everywhere is going to have some um, continuous variable. The technical skills you got to play around with some of those ideas as you work with COVID data and also highway data as you layered that data and looked at how you could change the symbology and the style of data. Here you're really getting a first taste of being a cartographer, which is you know, the, the, the way that we, the, the series of techniques that we use to tell stories with maps. And in our problem-based learning lab, you were able to look at geographic distribution of disease counts and rates, display those cartographically on maps, and then also build tools that allow you to look at differences between patterns. And many of these skills you're going to get to reuse and um, sharpen as we go through the next round of modules. I think one thing that's really exciting about the skills that you've learned is that because we are working with 
point data, line data, area data. The methods that you have developed skills in are widely applicable to other things. So points could be um, crime locations, points could be destinations, points could be um, sample locations, they could be the location of birds that you um, see in your backyard. So all kinds of different things can be represented by points, lines, and areas. And now that you have the skills to work with some of that data, you're going to find lots of other applications that might be interesting. So thanks for sticking with us, and I hope that you've enjoyed this module, learning from this module as much as we've enjoyed creating it.